Okay, great. All right, so that's my name. Um, sorry, I better stick with the microphone. Um, that's my website where I blog about some techni different technical stuff. And that's my Twitter handle if you want to grab me for any question or any comments. So I would like to explain first by a short story. So here we have Bob, who is a cowboy coder. He doesn't do any best practices. He doesn't have a build process. He ships directly into um, production environment. I hope none of you guys does. I'm sure you do. Um, um, so we have Alice. Um, Alice, when when they comes and joins the team, she's a great developer. She loves CI servers, so she advocates for Team City. And here you see um, um, Bob loses his hair because she just wouldn't stop. So she introduces um, Team City. Um, it simplifies the build workflow. They start running the test. Um, it simplifies the deployment, creates a consistent build. John, um, who's a uh, a graduate developer, a junior developer. He's fearless, um, so he goes and experiments with things. Um, he makes certain changes into the build workflow, and something breaks. Everybody freaks out. <laughs> Obviously, the build is broken. That's not a great thing, so we need to fix that. John doesn't know what he changed to cause the build to fix, and um, Alice doesn't know what happened, so she's going to spend half a day, one day, two days to investigate. So. The point that I'm trying to make here, and you would appreciate that I'm exaggerating a little bit, but this happens, and it happens a lot. Um, the point that I'm trying to make here is that putting all your eggs in one basket is probably not a good idea. It's never a good idea. Um, putting the build pipeline and the whole configuration into the build server is not a great idea. And the reason why it's not, because of these four reasons that I have here. The build config, when you are putting the whole configuration into the, the CI server um, does not have the same rigor, the same um, quality control as you would have in your code. So that's why uh, using a build script that's part of your code is always a better idea. Portability, if you decide tomorrow to switch from Team City to Jenkins or from Jenkins to Bamboo, um, you would want to have all your build just take it and move it into somewhere else rather than going and reconfiguring the same thing. Extensibility. Um, so if you want to have um, the ability to build new solutions for new platforms or for new targets, um, you would want to have um, a pool of um, plugins and things that you could grab and use. And ease of use, how easy it is for your developers to, to, um, to onboard a new tool. And that's where Fake and F Sharp comes into the picture. So Fake is a domain-specific language uh, for building... Um, uh, build script for creating build scripts and you use fake it's just an executable file um, that comes with the tools and you create your build script um, as uh, one script file so there is fake and there is cake you could build in F sharp or in C sharp so I assume people here would probably use in um, fake um, and F sharp probably people on the other side they would use C sharp um, I prefer to use F Sharp just to give me more reasons to learn F Sharp, but it's up to you. You could use uh, Fake or Cake. So using Fake, you could create your build script, as I'll show you in a second, uh, to create, uh, to, to build uh, using MS Build, X Build, and, and other tools, uh, to run your test using um, uh, NUnit and X Units and, and um, other, other test frameworks. Uh, creating NuGet packages and pushing NuGet packages, transforming configurations, um, and a lot of other things. The other good thing about using Fake is that it's just a NuGet package. So you just install it as a NuGet package and that's it. You are all set up. So you don't need to install all these agents and tentacles and all these um, jargons. Um, so let's look at a small um, 101 uh, build script for a uh, for an F sharp. So here, this is nothing but uh, an F sharp code. So how many people in the room have done coding in F sharp? All right, great. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to need to explain. Um, it's very simple. Um, basically, what's it saying? Um, there are four four targets. You can see the word target here. You can see the pointer. Um, so here we're just saying this is our solution file. Uh, this is the build directory, and this is the version that we are passing. So you pass this normally from your CI server because you have a, an auto incremented build number. Um, and here we're saying this is our target. A target is nothing but a, you could think of it as a build step. So when I say clean for my target, um, it does the clean. Um, when I say um, 
transform configuration, it's going to update the app setting and it's going to change the environment name to whatever I'm going to pass in here. So I could pass it as a parameter. Um, when I say build, it's just going to do the MS build and this is the directory that, or the, the build configuration that's going to do um, using debug and this is the solution file. Um, when I say run test, it's going to do the same thing. So the, the beauty of it is that you can see um, your build step can be just cut down into one line because there is a lot of community, there is a lot of hard work that's gone into it and it simplified the whole process for you. The other good part of it is that you could define this hierarchy of uh, build steps. So you could say, when I say um, run, when I say build, um, it would do the transform configuration for me. When I say run test, it would do the clean and then it would do the build and then it would do the run test. So you could, you could do that uh, very easily. So I wanted to prepare a demo, but because of the short time frame, I couldn't, I couldn't do the whole demo. So I, I created the demo, um, I put it on GitHub, and I took a screenshot of it here. So you should trust me that it works, but if you don't trust me, you could go and go download the code and then use it. Um, so basically, um, all you need to do, you just say fake.executable, and then you give it the build script uh, file name that you have created, and you, cr you, you give it the build step that you want to run, whether it's clean, build, run test, configuration file, changes um, and you pass any parameters so you could override any of the uh, the parameters this is this is very good for changing the environment name or the version number for example um, fake is very extensible so um, it's great when um, especially in, in today's technology landscape where there are so many frameworks so many platforms so many tools so you would want to have something that would um, help you and take you further so you wouldn't want to be locked in into a particular ecosystem, whether that's, um, I don't know, C-sharp or .NET or um, JavaScript. You would want to have all your options open. Um, and fake is great for that. So everything that you could think of, there is, there is, there is a tool that somebody has already written there. And the beauty of it, if, if it doesn't have that, you are already in code. You are in C-sharp and F-sharp. So you could, you could write whatever you want. So a couple of months ago, I was writing this build script for transforming some XML and I had some difficulty because I have some complex namespaces in the XML um, I couldn't find the right step that would do what I wanted to do in the plugin so I just wrote it in F sharp just created a method and that, that just works so somebody would think okay what what's great about it I mean okay you have you have a way of creating your build script but you, you could already do that with gulp or PowerShell for example um, now the the reason why it's different because um, your developers are not going to need to go and learn uh, PowerShell. Um, you're not going to need to be um, great in, in JavaScript to use Gulp. Um, most of the people here, I, I assume, are writing code in, in .NET, in F Sharp or C Sharp. So you're already there. You're already doing your coding. So that's a great advantage. You don't need to install anything. Um, it's just a NuGet, so NuGet package that's going to be installed as part of your um, uh, build process and there is plenty of help there is plenty of plugins and there is a great community behind it so as I s explained um, there is fake and cake um, and there is a great comparison between them um, on this website uh, that shows you in terms of community in terms of engagement in terms of plugins in terms of um, stars on, on github so if you are interested have a look and pick what what's what suits you best but in terms of feature parity I think they have very close feature parity the, the two of them so I hope I have convinced you or given you a taste of what it is to, to use fake and um, hopefully you would go and look up fake and cake and start using them. Um, I don't know if there is any time for any questions. Any questions? No? Great, thanks. <laughs>